Hi, it's about time somebody took it upon themselves to teach you sheet metal module in SOLIDWORKS properly. This is episode two. If you're starting from this video, you should know that we are picking it up where we left off in the previous episode. If you haven't watched that, go watch that first. It should be on the right side of your YouTube or I'm gonna go put the link to the first episode in the description of this video. Watch that first, come back here. In the previous episode, we started creating a, this sheet metal component. We explained why we need that on so on and so forth. And in this episode, I'm gonna continue continue building upon this. And I'm not just gonna dive in into using all these cool features, put a vent there, create a good looking component, because I've seen all the other YouTube videos are almost doing that. Put a vent there. Yeah, it already starts to look like a proper sheet metal component or a, some bunch of forming tools like louvers and so on, but it doesn't teach you what it needs to be learned. Instead, I'm gonna continue by building up using edge flange mostly, do some corner treatments. I will put one louver just for the sake of, you know, showing you that. And then we're gonna go to some fasteners and finish this video off by teaching you how to create a drawing for a sheet metal component because that's what it matters the most. You need to know how to define your component in a 2D drawing and I will insert one PEM knot into this because it's part of the fasteners. On top of that, we will talk about the bounding box and the cut list a little bit. These are what you need to know. And from that point on, every other tool that I will teach you or you will learn it on your own elsewhere will apply to the same concept. So this is the foundation. Now, if you're ready to start building up your foundation, the way I teach it, pay attention. This is the component from the last time and I'm gonna use edge flange on these two edges at the same time. Oh, let's just go up one. No. All right, now I'm gonna select this edge too. You know how I lovely it is when SOLIDWORKS fails you? Yes, I said it, SOLIDWORKS sometimes does fail you. I don't know why, this should not happen. You should be able to create edge flanges on two ends at the same time like this. Last time it was not my fault. But well, look, we go a little bit further up. Let's just go to 40 or something. Oh, whoa, 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 30. Or actually, maybe we go to up to this vertex. Oh, wait, yeah, okay. Now we have the same height and okay, right. Imagine we have these two walls on the side, but we wanna put some fastener there and we wanna make them, you know, completely tied together. First of all, the gap here is too big. And since we have created this, you see some warping here, even in the coloring and the rendering of SOLIDWORKS, you can see that. We have created some tension in real life on the sheet. So we could do some corner treatments here. Let's just start with that. Corners, there are four types. In this case, I'm gonna work with corner relief. Select this and click on collect all corners. There are three band corners and two band. These are the uh, two, oh, there is another one. Oh, it has detected another corner here, right? We go to relief options, set it to circular, set it to two and click okay. Look what happens here. It just cuts a little bit of a sheet away and that relieves this sheet from having too much stress from bending too tight there. Another corner treatment, which is called closed corner. Now there are three types of closing this corner, either equally or one over the other or vice versa. The number is between one and zero. This is the percentage, you know, 100% all the way, 50, 50 or whatever. Let's just keep it like this. Oh, actually, let's just do it like this. And now for my own sake, I wanna see if I still can do some corner relief over here. I'm not sure if it's possible, but let's just detect it was not uh, rectangular invalid. I think it's this one, circular. No, it doesn't work like that. That's true. Oh, it did, it did work. Okay, you can still do that, but it's just way too big. Why is it like that? Doesn't look good. Okay, now why is it like this? I don't know. Maybe a sheet metal expert, not SOLIDWORKS sheet metal expert, just a real manufacturer can explain. Maybe it's necessary. I don't know why, but just to make sure it works, yes, we can flatten this and that's good. Now, this is not complete. We want to create some fasteners here. I want these two walls to just be fixed together using some bolts and nuts. So let's do that. Again, edge flange, you see how useful edge flange is? I'm not even done working with it. I just come all the way here, 25, but it's completely overlapping. So we select this option that puts it on the inside. We change the thickness from the bottom. Let's just go up. Yeah, whatever. And finish. Now we have something like this. Now I want to create a hole here so I can insert a bolt and nut to fix these together. Let's do that. While I'll do this using hole wizard, keep that in mind. This sheet, 
was two millimeters thick. Oh, like how thick two millimeters is. One inch is 25.4 millimeters. Two millimeters is one twelfth of that. So almost uh, even less. So almost one twelfth of an inch. And you cannot cut threads into this. Sure, it was a much thicker sheet. You could, but depending on the purposes or how strong you want these to be fixed together, you have to figure out how to do this properly. Now, I would go to Hole Wizard. If you select the third option, Hole, you could change your standard to PAM inch or metric. In this case, I'm working with metric. Filter knots, and I have selected 300 SC. Now, just click on the position. Right, just one there would be enough. And now we have a hole. Okay, why is it a countersink? Oh, the depth was not enough. Okay, now this is our hole. And in order to fix these two together, you need PEM nuts. And for that, we would go to the toolbox. I have already have it open here, but just to show you where you find it, you would go down and you would find PEM inch or PEM metric. My hole was PEM metric nuts. And if I go to non-locking, you will find the same stat of the whole wizard that I have used here, 300 SC nuts. So we are gonna drag it here, drive the component, sure, and reverse it, done. It looks much bigger because it would be like this. And a PEM nut in reality will be punched into the sheet. So it will look something like this. Let me just show you. This is our PEM nut that has threads on the inside. Now I have a screw a bolt into this and fix these two sheets together and you don't even see this PEM nut on the inside. And in order to see how it looks like on the inside the sheet metal, let me just make it see through. Which one is this one? This one. Now look, it has some, you know, zigzaggy patterns here that is forced into the sheet metal. You could just Google PEM nuts and see how deep it goes into the sheet. And also something like this, synced, countersinked. It's punched into the sheet. It has inner thread and now I can insert a bolt and just use whatever standard bolt that I want and connect these two sheet walls together. So this is one, that's number one. And this is one way to do this. If I use the flat pattern, you won't be seeing the PEM nut anymore because the concept here is to design the sheet metal. SolidWorks knows that. It knows that you're all about designing this component and those knots are standard. So you don't need to define it here inside the modeling canvas. Let's just continue by doing one louver into this. I don't want to open the door into forming tools. Forming tools is a different component. If you can just take a look at this sink that I have made here, what is this? Okay, these cavities that define the sink are not a bent sheet in SOLIDWORKS. If I use flatten, you would see it still remains like this. The only thing that gets flat is the side sheets and these are forged and deformed. So this is a sheet that is deformed into this geometry and that is something that we define using forming tools. Deep topic, not for this episode. I will cover it later, okay? So take my word for it. Watch this simple example and move on. The way you do it is you go to the design library, not toolbox, design library. You go to forming tools. You have some default ones. You could create new ones, which I have done. And let's just flip the tool on the inside, 180 and I can change the position as well here, just like dragging, dropping it or adding dimensions from the side. What do you have? Let's just do 20. Oh, no, I meant this one. Thank you very much. And from the top, I just do five. Yeah, click OK. And now we have our own louver, which is good for airflow. You could have more of them by going to the features tab, use the linear pattern, which also works on a sheet metal component, just like a normal solid body, 14. Let's have two of it. Click OK. Now, if I use flatten, you would still see these two as deformed. They don't go back to being flat. That's fine. That's the way you should be defining it for your manufacturer. And now we have this component. Let's just cover very important facts that I have not seen on YouTube. First thing first, do you see these dashed lines? This is your bounding box, okay? The size of this box defines the minimum size or the minimum area of your sheet that your manufacturer needs. So if they ask you to define the bounding box for them, this is what you should be defining for them. So this is 14653. I'm not gonna click here. This is just a normal way of doing it. And we have 130.13. So this times that gives you the bounding area of your sheet. This is the minimum sheet size that you need to create and cut this component out of. The right way to get this number is to get it through the cut list that SOLIDWORKS does offer you perfectly. Very nice. For some reason, SOLIDWORKS doesn't 
collapse this component. Anyways, let's just stay on the flat form. So this is the cut list. It gives you the bounding box length. You can read the value here, bounding box width. So 146, 113, 130.13, uh, 130 the values that I measured, but you get it properly here. And if you take the CSWPA-SM exam, and if you want to pass it, this will be asked of you, okay? They will ask you not always the bounding box area, but sometimes the length of the bounding box or the width. And if you don't know which is which, you have to come to the cut list, right click and go to properties and read the value that you want. So this is a very important piece of information. All right, as I promised, did I miss anything? I just said, the fastener, the pem nut is there, louvers are there, the corner treatment. There are two more corner treatments like welding. I'm not going to cover that. Welding just makes some steps irreversible. We will cover this at a later time, not in this video. And now the drawing. Okay, let's just do the drawing. To do the drawing, the most productive way that I have found is just to go to the flatten view and then start your drawing. Okay, because the first thing you want to define in A2 drawing is your flat pattern, period. So we go, we create a drawing from the component and on the side we should be able to see the flat pattern yes a flat pattern it just comes here a little bit messy one to one is good i think it's too small i just leave it like that and just like a normal solid body you you need to be defining everything all the important dimensions, details, call outs, and so on and so forth. And one major difference that you are observing right now in front of you are these up to 90 degrees R1, up 90 degrees R1. So what are these down 20 degrees R1? These are your bending lines, okay? It needs to be bent from here, 20 degrees downward, 90 degrees upward with a ra inner radius of one, inner radius of one. So either you leave it like this, like an amateur, or you would go to the annotations tab, insert the bend table, which sums all these information up in a table cleanly and just tags your sheet. So you have A and is upwards 90 degrees in a radius one. D, downwards 20 degrees in a radius one. That's how you should be doing it. This this is called a bend table, all right? I mean, SOLIDWORKS always does define the fixed face of your drawing sheet. Now, from this point on, you have to define everything. One thing that you can call out is your hole because it's a standard one. You could just do this and things you should be defining in a drawing. So we have our bending lines. Selecting it is a little bit weird. You don't see a corner popping up like a normal edge of your component, but it does select it, even though you don't see anything. And then you can define the value. So 25, 76 with an angle of 74, a little bit messy, but I think it's just clear what's going on. And you do it for all of that. You can define the radius here. It's a two. You should be able to do some detailed view of your up-round tears. Do four to one. Okay, and apparently it is. And I don't like the ISO look. Let's just go to ANSI or AMC. Boom. All right, now we define the radius of this. We define the depth. We define everything and we define the location of all the bending lines. We define the size and location of every hole like this. And if you're watching sheet metal in SOLIDWORKS, you know how to do drawing and add dimensions. So I'm not going to bore you with that. You know how to do it. And if you don't, first of all, you should not be watching this video. And if you really don't, go and watch my SOLIDWORKS drawing mini series, which comes in three episodes and you need that. But I hope you already know how to do the rest. All right, flat pattern is really important. One thing I would like to define in a drawing sheet is to define the bounding box of this sheet as well. As you can see, it's not the right value. It used to be 130.13, right? How do we define that? Do we see it anywhere? Do we write it anywhere? You could just write it. If you want, you could go to annotations, write the values you had from your cut list, which was 130... 0.13 by 140. Point, let's just say 85. I'm not sure. Bounding box area. I would just put it anywhere inside. It's a good piece of information for your manufacturer to know. So this is a delivered promise for the second episode. Now, before I wrap this video up or show you other components, let's just go back to this component and talk about so many other features that you can do. You need to know a little bit about sheet metals. So some of these tools make sense for you. For example, cross break. If I don't tell you anything, and if you just click on it and click OK, all you see is just a cross line. And it's just a line, nothing more. So you're like, oh, what does it do exactly? I just see lines. It's for preventing the warping of a sheet. If it's too large, you have to do that. But it just a normal look inside SOLIDWORKS. So some of these tools require some previous knowledge for you to understand them. 
and some just don't. In the previous episode, I told you there are four ways to create a sheet metal, and I just covered one of them. Before I wrap this video up as a bonus content, I'm gonna cover the second way of doing this, and this second way is most likely is covered in the CQWPA-SM exam as well. So all I need is a solid component, like this, and we want to convert this into sheet metal. The way to do that is to go to the sheet metal tab, click on convert sheet metal. First thing you select is your fixed surface. I think this one makes sense to be the fixed one. And then on bent edges, you select all the edges that you must. Look, it's just trying to make sense of it. And if it doesn't, it's because the values are way too big. Make them smaller and thickness go one and just the gap is too big, go one, K factor doesn't matter at this point. Now we keep selecting the rest of the edges. It's a bent edge, we cannot select that. Just select this. Don't worry, they will not give you a bent edge or a curvy one inside the CSWPA-SM exam. I keep saying that word, I like saying it fast. Okay, we have some bent ones that we cannot convert into sheet, at least not through edge flange. There are other ways to do this. For example, Mittler flange, which needs a drawing and yeah so before I just click okay there are things you should pay attention to especially in the exam because sometimes they ask you to put the sheet metal within the solid body sometimes you should put the solid body within the sheet metal one way or the other so that's how you do it reverse thickness okay if I check that it goes on the inside sorry if I uncheck that it goes outside and you could just do some corner treatments set the defaults and click OK. Let's just, oh, one thing, keep body or remove body. Right, so this is almost the component that was made from a solid material. Now it's almost a sheet metal minus these two curvy faces, which we will have to fix through a different method. There are different methods to do this, but again, this was the bonus content of the video, not a topic of its own, which I will cover probably in a later video if I see high demand on these two episodes so far. If you have watched the previous episode and this episode, subscribe and comment, I want more, okay? If I don't get enough interest, I will cover a different topic. If I do, I would just go further down the sheet metal path and I would just try to cover as many features as possible for you to learn sheet metal. I don't know why it wasn't covered before. It's my bad, but now it is. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and oh, watch my drawing mini series, normal mini series. Let me know what you want to watch. <sighs> I don't script my videos. I should do that. I'm just kidding. I never will. I never will. <laughs>